and welcome to Math 136. This is Unit 1, Day 1. We're going to work on rate of change problems and absolute value equations today. So example 1 is a rate of change problem. That means something is happening at a constant rate, which means we can find the average rate of change. A lot of times it's per minute, per hour. So for this one, we have a deep sea diver being lowered at a constant rate. After his initial dive at eight minutes, the diver is at a depth of 600 feet. After 40 minutes, the diver is at a depth of 1,350 feet. We are being asked to find the average rate of lowering per minute. So keywords here, per minute, that means we need to divide something by the number of minutes. So we're going to find the change in depth. So the change in depth divided by the change in time, in this case, is minutes. So our change in depth. So we started out at eight minutes at a depth of 600 feet. And now we're at a depth of 1,350 feet. To find the change, we're going to subtract. So 600 minus 1,350. For the change in time, our time when we were at 600 feet was eight minutes. And then the time when we were at 1,350 feet was 40 minutes. One thing to keep in mind here, the first numbers have to go together and then the second numbers have to go together. So at eight minutes, we were at 600 feet. Those are together on top and bottom. And then the second term, the 1,350 is at the 40 minute mark. So it's important to make sure those line up. And then we're just going to subtract across the top. So 600 minus 1,350 is negative 750. And then eight minus 40 is negative 32. We're gonna go ahead and type this into our calculators. So we're gonna take 750 divided by 32, and that's going to give me 23.4375. I'm not gonna round that because there's four decimal places. It's not gonna take me too long to write out all those four. So we're lowering at a rate of 23.4375, and then I'm going to label it feet per minute. And this right here is our final answer. So a lot of times you've seen this in algebra one as the slope formula, the change in y divided by the change in x. Here we're just finding the change in depth divided by the change in time. We know that time has to go on bottom because we were finding the rate of lowering per minute. The per minute tells me that the minutes has to go on the bottom. Example two, now we have a balloon floating up in the air at a constant rate. In 10 minutes, the balloon is 500 feet off the ground. After 50 minutes, the balloon is at a height of 1,400 feet. What is the average rate of increase per minute? Again, we have those keywords per minute. So I know the denominator is going to be minutes. And in this case, again, the numerator is going to be the change in feet. So I'm going to pair my numbers up together here. So I have 10 minutes and 500 feet. The 500 has to go on top. The 10 minutes goes on bottom. And again, we're finding the change, so we're going to subtract the second pair of numbers is 50 minutes and 1,400 feet. So 50 has to go on bottom, 1,400 goes on top. We're going to subtract, that's going to give me negative 900 divided by 
negative 40. When I compute that, it's going to give me 22.5. I'm going to label it feet per minute. And that right there is your final answer. Moving on to example three, I'd like you to pause this video and see if you can work through the problem on the screen. Now that you've had a chance to try this problem, we're going to go ahead and work it out together. So first pair of numbers, we have 12 minutes in 475 miles. We're trying to figure out how many miles the plane is traveling per minute. So we want miles per minute. So we're going to start with miles on top. Oops. So we're going to start with 475 and 12 minutes. Notice we never just try to figure out at time zero. We never want to use time zero because they're going to accelerate faster at the beginning. We only want to use the information that they're giving us to compute these values. So we know that the plane at time zero was still at the airport, but we know it was accelerating faster and not traveling at a constant rate of change during that initial time. So the second set of information we have, 75 minutes and 1,500 miles. We're going to compute this. I'm going to have negative 1,025 divided by negative 33. And that's going to give me 31.06 repeating. That sign up, that line above there tells me that the 06 repeats. And that's going to be miles per minute. And that right there is the final answer. Moving on to example four, we're going to some absolute value equations. When we solve absolute value equations, remember that absolute value represents the distance something is from zero on a number line. So we always want to, first of all, isolate the absolute value bars before we do anything else. So in this case, to isolate the absolute value bars, we need to get rid of this plus three by subtracting three from both sides. Again, when we say both sides, you're gonna do it one time on the left of the equal sign, one time on the right of the equal sign. So now we have, 3x minus 2 in our absolute value bars equals 12. Now remember, whatever's inside those absolute value bars could be positive 12 because 12 is 12 units away from 0 on a number line. But whatever's inside those absolute value bars could also equal negative 12 because negative 12, when you take the absolute value of it, actually equals positive 12. So whatever's in here has two options. So we're going to split this into two problems here. So we're going to have 3x minus 12 could equal 12. That was the original just without the absolute value bars. The second option is that 3x minus 12 could equal negative 12. So that 3x minus 12 that's in those absolute value bars could equal negative 12 because when you compute the absolute value, it would give you a positive 12. So now we're going to take these two equations and we're going to solve them for x. So we're going to add 12 to this side and this side. So 3x equals 24. Divide both sides. Pardon me, I wrote the problem down wrong, so we're going to fix this. There we go. 
Okay, so we're going to add two to both sides. There, so 3x equals 14. Again, my apologies, I wrote 12 instead of two. Going to divide both sides by three and get an answer of 14 thirds. So a lot of times for these questions, you're going to end up with fractions or decimals. I would leave them as fractions. If you wanted to convert to a decimal, you could. That would be 4.6 repeating as a decimal. The second equation over here, we're going to add two to both sides. So 3x equals negative 10. Divide both sides by 3. And x equals negative 10 thirds. Again, I would leave that as my final answer. If you were adamant about converting it to a decimal, it would be negative 3.3 .3 repeating. Moving down to example five. When I look at this absolute value equation, in order to isolate the absolute value, there are two things that need to be moved. So in this case, I need to move the plus three and I need to move the negative two. First thing I wanna do is move that in my, or plus three by subtracting three from both sides. So that's going to give me this. Now the tricky thing here is getting rid of that negative two. A lot of students want to get rid of that negative two by adding two to both sides, but that's not correct. So when we look at that negative two, we have to decide what operation is going on right in here between the negative two and the absolute value bars. So since there's no symbol listed in there, it's assumed to be multiplication. Since that's multiplication, if I want to get rid of it, I would have to divide both sides by negative two. So those are going to cancel. You're going to have the absolute value of four X plus six equals positive nine. Now that we have the absolute value bars isolated, we are going to go ahead and split this into two problems. In this case, what's inside the absolute value bars could equal positive nine, or could equal negative nine. So four X plus six equals nine, and 4x plus 6 equals negative 9 are going to be our two equations. I'm going to solve both of these for x. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So 4x equals 3. Divide both sides by 4. And x equals 3 fourths. Again, I would just leave it as a fraction, but you could write it as 0.75. For the second one over here on the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and start off by subtracting 6 from both sides. So 4x equals negative 15. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4. To get x equals negative 15 fourths. Again, I prefer a fraction, but if you want to write a decimal, it would be negative 3.75. One more for today. I'd like you to pause this video and work on this example here. All 
All right, now that you've worked through this problem, let's go ahead and see if you got it correct. First thing you wanna do for this problem is subtract one from both sides. That's gonna give you this equation here. And just like example five, you have a number sitting out front of your absolute value bars. In this case, it's negative one. Negative one is being multiplied by those absolute value bars. So we're going to divide it. You never want to take that value and distribute it in. You always want to divide. So those are gonna cancel. We're gonna have six minus two X equals 26. And now we're going to split into two problems. So 6 minus 2x equals 26, and 6 minus 2x equals negative 26. In order to solve both of these for x, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So negative 2x equals 20. We're gonna divide both sides by negative two to get x equals negative 10 as one solution. For the one on the right hand side, we're gonna subtract six from both sides, negative two x equals negative 32. Divide both sides by negative two and x equals positive 16. I need you to now get on Google Classroom and complete the assignment for day one. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know.